Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is look at this two block problem. We have two blocks, a mass M1 and M2 stacked on top of each other and I am going to apply a force to the top block as shown in the figure. Now that force is at an angle with respect to the horizontal. Now in this problem we're going to assume that there is friction between the two uh, top two blocks but there is very little friction between the bottom block and the surface that it's resting on. So we're just going to neglect that, call it a frictionless surface. Uh, my goal is going to be to find what is the maximum force that I could apply to that top block so the both blocks move together. So how do I set this problem up? Uh, at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a numerical answer, plug in the numbers, but we're first going to do it algebraically. Now we're going to follow the same steps I always follow for anything to do with Newton's laws. The first step is to draw the free body diagram. This is the key uh, to understanding problems like this. We have two objects, we're going to have two free body diagrams. Now the next step we got to do is you have to add these vectors. Um, all of the arrows that we're going to have on our free body diagram, you have to add them as vectors. So we have to pick a coordinate system. Very, very important step. Step three says, now we simply write down Newton's laws. So we're going to have Newton's second law for this horizontal direction because the blocks want to accelerate when you apply a force on them. But in the vertical direction, we apply Newton's first law. There is no acceleration in that vertical direction. Once we have finished writing down Newton's second and first law for this uh, two block problem, we then simply solve for the unknowns. And then we're gonna substitute our numbers in. All right, so like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, so step one says we have to draw the free body diagram. So I've separated the blocks over here and now we're simply going to start writing down our forces. There is a weight on each block. That is the earth pulling down on each block. All right, uh, we have my applied force F here. Uh, what other forces do we have? Well, uh, if there's surfaces in contact, there should be a normal force here, right? So we're gonna call this force N1. This is block M2 pushing up on M1. Now for M2, we also have a normal force. I'm gonna call it N2. This is the earth pushing up on the block M2. Now, if I have this N1 over here, it means that, remember, this is M2 pushing up on M1. It means if I go to M2, I must also have an N1 force. Because if block M2 pushes up, that means block M1 pushes down. So you have to have this. This is the third law at work right here. All right, now in addition to this now, think about friction. How do we draw friction on this problem? Uh, let me go ahead and switch the color over here. So friction, I'll do it in, uh, in orange. So think about the bottom block, right? If you apply a small force and they don't slip together, we know the bottom block is going to accelerate to the right. So that means there has to be a force acting in this direction. I'm just gonna draw it right up here. This is going to be the force of static friction. I don't want the blocks to slide with respect to each other, so it has to be static friction. Now, in addition now, we have a static friction here on M1 that opposes the motion. All right, so I have to have a force of static friction right here. All right, that is it for step one. Guess what? Step two is straightforward. Step two says pick a coordinate system. Uh, for this problem, what we're going to do is just use a standard coordinate system that looks like this. I'm going to call everything pointing to the right as being in the positive x direction and everything pointing up as being in the positive y direction. And we're done. All right, so just clean this up a little bit. Uh, we now move to step three, which says we write down Newton's laws. Now, before I do that, one thing I want to do is I want to have all my forces down into these types of components, an X component that points to the right and a Y component that is vertical. So how do I do this for this problem? What we have to do is you have to break this force down, F, my applied force, into two components. So this is going to be one component. This guy here is going to be F cosine of theta because it's on the adjacent side. We also have a vertical component of this applied force, which is acting down. The magnitude of this guy here is F sine of the angle theta. 
Okay, so now we are in a position to write down Newton's laws of motion. So we're going to start off for the block M1. Okay, for the block M1, we have to consider the X direction, and we have to consider the Y direction. All right, in the X direction, we only have two forces, right? We have F cosine of theta and the force of static friction. So this is what it looks like. Positive F cosine of theta minus the force of static friction, and that's it. Must be equal to the mass of that block multiplied by the acceleration of that block. All right, in the vertical direction, you have three forces acting. So we have the normal force acting up, N1, and we have two forces acting down. First is the weight, M1g, and then we also have this component of the applied force, which is F sine of the angle theta. Now, there is no acceleration in that direction, so that's it. All right, now we look at uh, the bottom block. All right, that's the block M2. Uh, for this one, again, you could consider the x direction and we could consider the y direction. In the x direction, it's super easy. There is only one force, and that's that force of static friction between both blocks. So this block here must accelerate, and the acceleration is mass. Uh, sorry. Uh, the right-hand side of Newton's second law is the mass times the acceleration. Now we know right here that I have the same acceleration for both blocks. I have A and I have A here. That's because we want them to move together. That was a key statement in this problem. Okay, so you have to have the same acceleration. Now what else? Now we still have to do the vertical direction. Here we're given the force N2, which is acting up, minus N1, and then minus M2G. And here there is no acceleration again in that direction, so we are done. Now, our goal really is to find this applied force F, okay? Um, now, we have to look, where does that applied force actually show up? Well, it shows up over here in this first equation that I wrote. All right, first thing we're going to do is let's just look at these uh, vertical equations, okay? So these are right here and right here. Right away, you can use these to solve for the normal forces, okay? So we have that the normal force N1, looking at this first equation I, you just bring both of those terms on the other side. So we get the weight of the block plus this component of this applied force, F sine theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to box that equation. Uh, we're going to need this later when we're starting to talk about friction because we know friction depends on the normal force. Uh, the other uh, equation we can use is just to solve for N2. We may not be asked for that, but that's okay. So we can write it in terms of N1 and also plus the weight of the second block. So let me go ahead and box that equation up also. Now the last step I want to do is I want to look at the next equations, okay? The ones in the horizontal direction. So we have equation triple I right here and we have equation four. Now let's go ahead and rewrite those and I'm gonna stack them up right on top of each other. So this is what it looks like. So we have F cosine of theta minus the force of static friction equals to M1A. And our second one, look what we have, the force of static friction and M2A. Okay, these are the two other equations. Now, one thing I could do is I wanna solve for acceleration and I also want to solve for this applied force. One thing we can do is we can eliminate the force of static friction. If you notice that in one of the equations, the force of static friction comes in as negative Fs, and in the other one, it comes in as positive Fs. So one thing you could do is you could substitute Fs in one equation into the other right away, or another kind of trick you can do is just add up the equations. And if I add up the equations, look what I get. I get F cosine of theta, equals to M1 plus M2 times the acceleration. Okay, so this right away allows me to solve for the acceleration of the blocks. Go ahead and box this guy up as well. All right, so we've cleaned this up a little bit now. Remember what the goal is. The goal of all of this now is what is the maximum force? All right, I want this guy here to be a maximum value. Well, how do I do that? I'm not changing the angle here. I'm also not changing the total mass. What I do want to do is I want to make this acceleration, I want to make this as big as possible, right? I want that to be a maximum value. Now think about our last two equations that we wrote here before we simplified it. We see that the acceleration, at least for this second block down at the bottom, 
is directly proportional to that force of static friction. Okay, so now we have to think about friction in this problem. What do we know about friction in this problem? Well, we know that it only exists between the uh, between the two blocks. And one thing you should remember from class is that the force of static friction, you can write as something like this. It's an inequality. It must be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Now, in this case, the normal force we are looking at is the block N1. Now, if you want to write down an equation and not have an inequality right here, another way to write this is the maximum force of static friction is when you take this value right here. This is what the maximum force of static friction is. So what we need to do now is we need to substitute this maximum force of static friction into our equations here to find what is the maximum acceleration that you can have. Okay, so we're going to write the force of static friction, at least the maximum value of it, as our coefficient of static friction. And the normal N1, I actually have solved that before by looking at the vertical forces. The normal N1 is the weight plus the vertical component of that applied force. So we're going to see that this F appears in several different terms, okay? All right, now the next goal is simply to substitute this maximum force of static friction back into our equations in the horizontal direction. And this is what it looks like right here. So if I have uh, the first equation, I'll have F cosine of theta minus this force of static friction. Again, I'm taking the maximum value because my goal is to make F as big as possible. So here you have M1G and then plus F sine of the angle theta equals to M1A. On the right hand side, we have M1. Now we have this acceleration right here, but the acceleration we know, right? The acceleration you can get by combining both of our equations the way we did. So you should be able to eliminate this acceleration, which looks like an unknown, but right now it's simply F cosine of theta divided by what? You bring both of those terms to the other side, you get M1 plus M2. Now what we notice here is we have our force F that we're trying to solve for. Again, this is the maximum force, but it appears in three terms. So now you have to watch the algebra a little bit, okay? So what we're going to do is group all the terms on the left-hand side that include F. The only term that doesn't include F is this guy right here, okay? So this, once we bring it to the other side, it's going to take care of that negative sign. And let's group everything over here. So I'm going to factor out an F, open up a big bracket, and this is what I'm left with. I have cosine of the angle theta. For this second term here, I have a coefficient times sine of the angle theta. Okay, and now when I bring all of these other terms on the other side, look what I get. I get minus m1 cosine of the angle theta divided by m1 plus m2, close my bracket, and now the other term I had on the other side was mu s m1g. All right, this is kind of a key step, so be careful when you work out the math. All right, what I'm going to do to simplify this a little bit is I'm going to multiply both sides by m1 plus m2. All right, so I have to do it on this side. So this is getting a little bit small here but I have to multiply this. And if I do that, it's really gonna simplify the term here in the square bracket. First of all, I'm going to eliminate this term in the denominator right here. Um, and it's also going to group up these two terms with the cos, and this is what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and write this. So you're gonna get F, this is going to be M2 cosine of theta is all that's going to be left. And minus mu S, M1 plus M2 is going to come in here, sine of theta, and then on this side here, it's mu s m1, m1 plus m2 over little g. All right, and then the last step. Now, it looks like a very complicated expression, and it kind of is, right? Um, but it's okay. It involves just all the masses. It involves uh, the coefficient of static friction, and it involves little g. All right, and in the denominator here, we get this whole term in the square bracket, rather complicated m1 plus m2 over here times sine of the angle theta. All right. 
a lot of algebraic work in order to get to this answer, but this is our final answer. This is really a, my maximum force that I could apply so that the acceleration of the blocks is the exact same Okay, now let's go ahead and we have our numbers over here for mass m1, m2 sine of theta. Let's go ahead and calculate how big this force is. All right, we're now in a position now to actually do some calculations because we have all our final expressions. We have our applied force, the maximum value. So the next thing you can do is substitute in all these numbers here shown on the right in this gray box, right? Um, if you do that, uh, this is uh, what it looks like uh, over here. So. I uh, just substituted in all the numbers. We have mu s, m1, the total mass, which is 2 plus 7. Little g is 9.8. And down here, it involves some of those angles, right? And the angle's uh, fixed at 25 degrees here. Uh, when I put that in a calculator, uh, I get a value of 10.2 newtons. You can go ahead out and check that for yourself. Um, now, they, remember, this corresponds to the maximum force uh, that you could apply at this angle between both of those blocks having a coefficient of static friction, okay? Uh, there's two other quantities I could calculate. Um, we also looked at the maximum static friction between those blocks. So uh, here was our expression. This was nothing more than mu s multiplied by the normal force, which involved two terms over here. Um, you can go ahead and substitute the numbers into this expression here, and uh, this is what I did. And I got a value of approximately 7.2 newtons, just rounding to two significant figures here. And the last thing I think we can calculate is, well, we know the force, the static friction. Uh, we could look at what is the actual maximum acceleration. Now you have a choice of which equation you could use. We had two equations that involved acceleration, but you can use any of those. I just used the equation of motion for the block M2 because it was the simplest. And it was simply the maximum force of static friction now divided by that mass M2. And that gives me a value of approximately 1.03. Okay, folks, so kind of a nice problem, uh, a little tricky with the algebra because you have the term of this applied force that appears on both sides of the equation, and you have to do some algebra in order to get to a final value. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.